So let me show you how we can use this to our advantage. Let's say that we obtain DNA from a crime scene. Okay, and this is where we're going to bleed actually into the autoradiography portion of your lab, and that is interpretation of these gels. So let's say that we take the DNA from the crime scene and we cut it with a restriction enzyme denoted as restriction enzyme A. And we also take that same DNA and we cut it with a restriction enzyme denoted as restriction enzyme B. Let's say that we get for enzyme A with the crime scene DNA, bands that look something like this. Okay, so it cuts it once, gives us two fragments. Those two fragments in large quantity give us these two bands. The crime scene DNA, let's say that we also cut it with B, and we wind up getting something that looks maybe like this. All right, so it cuts it like that. So what we're going to want to look for, then, is we're going to want to look in our suspect lanes for exact matches to each of these when they're cut with their respective enzymes. So when we cut with enzyme A, we want to find bands in the suspect lanes that exactly match these two bands. When we cut with enzyme B, we want to find bands that look exactly the same and run at the same level in the enzyme B lane. Okay, so here comes suspect 1, cut with A, suspect 1, cut with B, and then suspect 2, cut with A, and suspect 2, cut with B. All right, so let's say suspect 1's first lane looks something like this, and his second lane, cut with B, looks something like this. Okay, and then suspect 2 is going to look like this. And this. So what you want to do whenever you're presented with crime scene data is you want to take the bands in your crime scene and you want to find out if they match with the bands in your suspect line. So here, We've got an exact match with that band for both suspects when we cleave with enzyme A. For this band, we also have an exact match. So currently, just looking at enzyme A in the crime scene, we've got an exact match for both suspects. And now the big difference. When we cut with B, we only match with suspect B there. Notice suspect I'm sorry, suspect 2. Suspect 1's is way up here. And when we cut with B, again, we only match suspect 2's. Because suspect 1's is way down here. So, in order for it to be the criminal who is at the scene of the crime, if you digest with two enzymes, both of those lanes have to match to both of your crime scene lanes for that person to be the guilty party. So in this particular instance, Suspect 2 matches both crime scene digested with A's lane with its own digested with A lane and crime scene digested with B's lane with its own digested with B lane. And okay? So in this case, Suspect 2 is the perpetrator. So you always are looking for a 100% match for however many lanes you have dedicated to your crime scene in your suspects to verify that that suspect is indeed the guilty. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is autoradiography in terms of paternity tests and gel electrophoresis in terms of paternity tests. So what you're going to do when you have a paternity test is a little different from what you do when you have a crime scene. So let me erase everything up here about the crime scene. Erase the bands. Okay. I'm actually going to change the number of lanes we have. Going to decrease it down to four. Okay, so I've got my lanes, I load my DNA, and this time my DNA is going to come from the following individuals. 
mother, child, potential father, and then this final lane is going to be called child, father, and I'll explain it at the very end. So what we do is we run the gel just like we normally would, and the child is going to wind up in this particular example having two bands, okay, just kind of like what we saw with crime scene. Now the way paternity test works is recall from your cell division lab that when the two haploid cells form a diploid cell, you get half of the chromosomal content from your mother and half of the chromosomal content from your father. So that means that if the child has two bands okay, representing his or her DNA, one of those bands the child will have in common with the mother. And the other one the child will have in common with the man that is his father. So if this gentleman has these bands, like this, he is not the child's father. I think we can all see that because the only band left in the child that needs to match with this gentleman is this band. Okay? Because they don't have that matching band, this particular male is not the father of this child. Even if this male had a band here, it would not necessarily mean that he is the father of the child. If it was verified that the mother is indeed the mother of this particular child, then this particular individual might be a relative, but he most likely is not the father, okay, because he's missing this band here. So, let me start, before I show you what it looks like when he is the father, by talking about the child-father lane. So the child-father lane represents a mixture of this sample and this sample. In other words, if I have a test tube of the child's DNA and a test tube of the father's DNA, I mix those two test tubes together to give me the child-father mixture. So a lot of students make the mistake of, in this lane, seeing this in this particular instance. And saying, oh, he must be his father, because see, this band is here. Well, that band, of course, is going to be there, because the mixture was child DNA and father DNA. And because these two bands were in the child's DNA in the first two, they're going to, of course, be in the mixture here. So see, the father donated this band in the mixture, the child donated this band in the mixture, and the father donated this band in the mixture, I guess the male, not the father. So, in this particular instance, he is not the father, and we see four bands in the child-father lane. Let's say, though, that he was the father. Okay, so he does have a match. Okay, so there's the child's DNA. Here's the father. Okay, so now he is the father. Now let's see how many bands we have. So here is the child's DNA running there, which gives us a band. Here is the father's DNA, right there, giving us a band. And then remember, these two bands represent fragments that are of equal length. So these two, when they are run out in this gel, because they are both fragments of equal length, are going to be represented as only a single band. Okay, so. That's really all you need to know. Crime scene, you're looking for an exact match. Paternity test, you're looking for the child to share a certain number of bands with the male who might be his father or her father. Now, in this particular instance, the child only had two bands. And the child shared one with the mother and one with the father. What if the child had had four bands? then the child would have actually shared two with the mother and two with the father. Okay, so it's always half and half, and you need to first verify how many bands are in the child's lane before you start trying to figure out if this particular individual is or is not the father. Because if the child had four bands, but only one of those bands matched with this particular person, this person is most likely not the father of that child. Okay? So that's all for biotechnology.
DNA isolation, gel electrophoresis, and autoradiography. Okay, and gel electrophoresis and autoradiography pretty much go hand in hand. In gel electrophoresis, you can use one of two techniques. You can use what's known as an intercalating reagent, which basically binds to the DNA fragments and pieces, and it causes them to fluoresce when they when they are illuminated with uh, ultraviolet light. The other technique is called a fast blast stain, which uses a blue stain to stain the gel blue, and you destain, that is, remove stain from the gel, which causes it to go from blue to clear again. And anywhere there's DNA, the DNA will actually retain the stain, so the DNA bands will remain blue. Autoradiography, on the other hand, is where we can actually utilize radiation to integrate that radiation into the DNA and then expose a gel to a blank piece of film, and anywhere there's radiation, the film will be blackened. And that actually will give us a transparency that shows us exactly where our DNA bands were. So the final unit that I will prepare for the review session will be prokaryotes, and that will be posted soon.